Hello, take a look at these pictures. What you are seeing here are images of buildings, well-known buildings here in Singapore, which are owned by Capita Commercial Trust. These are grade A office buildings, and you're bound to be familiar with them. Capital Tower, Six Battery Road, where the Standard Chartered headquarters are, One George Street, the HSBC building, and the Golden Shoe Car Park. Uh, the uh, company uh, Capital Land, the parent company, is the platinum sponsor of Singapore Investment Week, and the chief executive of Capital Commercial Trust, Lynette Leong, is here with me to tell us a little bit more about it. Hello, nice to see you. Hi, nice to see you, Mark. Now, many Singaporeans are already familiar with investing in property, because chances are they already own an HDB flat or perhaps even private uh, residential property. Can you tell us a little bit more about how different it would be to invest in a trust like yours as opposed to the sort of property investment that they might already know? Mm -hmm. Well, by investing in capital commercial trust, they get to own a piece of the CBD office buildings. And you just named uh, some of the office buildings that we own in, right in the heart of the central business district. So by just investing in a REIT, uh, a unit or many units of uh, capital commercial trust, they get to own a slice of uh, the office buildings. Now, many people might also know a little bit about investing in stocks, but actually your trust is not a stock in the traditional sense. There are some important differences between trusts and companies. Can you just elaborate on those? Well, in a trust, uh, we um, deliver uh, a, hopefully a stable uh, distribution to our unit holders and uh, they receive the income from the income uh, that we, the trust uh, receives, which is through, largely through the rental of premises that tenants pay and through some other non-rental income like car parking income. Uh, in addition to that, by owning a, a unit in a REIT, they receive tax-free uh, distributions. And depending on uh, what kind of REIT they own, uh, they also receive a fairly high level of uh, distribution per unit, as high as in the case of a capital commercial trust, uh, it's about 5.8% yield on, uh, say, if they bought the, the unit uh, just yesterday, then they will be receiving about 5.8% distribution. And uh, we deliver a fairly stable income stream over time, and that's because uh, of uh, the rental income that we receive from these CBD office buildings, and they are largely tenanted by very, very pronounced uh, or very prominent tenants. Mm. So you're taking part in the cash flow of the business. You're not waiting for the directors to declare a dividend, which sometimes they don't, right? Uh, directors of companies don't declare a dividend, even if they have positive cash flow. Yeah. In the case of a REIT, uh, we are supposed to deliver at least 90% of our income stream. But in capital commercial trust case, we have been delivering 100% uh, of uh, our income stream. So we actually distribute everything that uh, we receive as uh, our income. What other um, differences do property investors need to know about? For example, the differences between the residential property cycle and the office cycle. I mean, it's all property, but you actually do have very different features to your cycles, don't you? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, in the office uh, cycle, uh, it depends on the economy, largely, of uh, Singapore and of, uh, to some extent of the world. Uh, and Singapore is, after all, a very attractive place to doing business. So the economy, while it's dependent on uh, what happens around the world, but the fact is that Singapore is a very stable place to do business, and the Singapore government uh, has a lot of tax incentives to attract foreign businesses to come. Uh, within the whole region, you can count Singapore as uh, the number one spot for doing business in Asia. So in that sense, uh, the uh, office market uh, is largely dependent on what kind of tenants uh, uh, come to Singapore. And in our case, our portfolio is within the central business district. Uh, most of the businesses here are thriving, and they thrive on the fact that Singapore is also a financial center of the world. So the uh, kind of tenants that uh, are within our portfolio are uh, financial services related, uh, but they also uh, are also in the energy sector, in commodity sector, as well as uh, legal firms and accounting firms. And they all need an office. They not all need an office. So we all have to work sometime. <laughs> uh, and they all prefer to be in the central business district where all the, uh, the, uh, uh, the action is. 
Now, the Ministry of Trade and Industry at uh, around the National Day uh, time during August said that the economic growth forecast for Singapore was around one and a half to two and a half percent. For retail investors, how much of that can we say directly translates into, let's say, a one and a half to two and a half percent increase in rentals? Is that how it works? Not so much as that. It also depends on the uh, supply of office space. Uh, over the next few years, the average annual supply of office space is about 1.1 million square feet. Uh, if you compare that figure with historical numbers, in the past 20 years, through different economic cycles, uh, the average had been 1.3 million square feet. So 1.1 versus 1.3 is actually much less than what it was it used to be before. Really? It doesn't sound like a lot. Is it a lot? 1.1 uh, million difference? square feet is about, uh, I would say, Capital Tower is about one and a half size of Capital Tower, which is actually a very, um, it's not an excessive figure for a growing economy like Singapore. Uh, and uh, in the next few years, in the next two years in particular, the amount of square feet is less than a million square feet. So we're talking about very short supply. And the demand, if uh, you believe in Singapore being a very strategic hub for Asia, a lot of business come here, especially now when the West is not doing so well, you have uh, more uh, companies setting up offices in Singapore to take advantage of the growth in Asia, and in particular, Southeast Asia. As a result of that, we believe that demand will continue to grow. And uh, because supply is uh, still not very excessive, therefore you can see rents um, potentially increasing. Currently, because of uh, the global economy being still a bit weak, uh, the rental market is uh, kind of stable, is um, weakened a little bit, but we're not seeing the same extent that it plunged during the global financial crisis. Mm. Now, we think that that is a thing of the past. And what we can look forward to is uh, stability in rental and maybe an increase once the economy recovers. Mm -hmm. Because you also need to be a bit flexible for your tenants, right? You can't just continually jack up the rents on them, right? Well, the tenants basically sign a long-term lease uh, from three to sometimes as long as 10 years, uh, some even longer. So that gives us a stability in rental income. At the same time, uh, within our portfolio, amongst our top 10 tenants, they contribute 46% of our income stream. So it gives stability. Now, these top 10 tenants are tenants like uh, government of uh, investment or corporation, uh, banks, very stable banks uh, such as uh, HSBC, JP Morgan. So we've got very uh, stable income stream from these large tenants. And then at the same time, for th there are smaller tenants that also gives you us the stability in, in income. Is, is that, uh, are these fluctuations in the global economy then the reason why in the second quarter your gross revenue was down slightly, 1.5%? The gross revenue uh, declined as a result of uh, some of the negative rent reversions that has occurred in the last few years. Uh, negative because during the global financial crisis, rents actually plunged to uh, about uh, half, more than half of what they used to be. So some of these leases are still being renewed that were signed much earlier before the global financial crisis. So when the leases expire, they renew to today's market rent, there's a, short, there's a shortfall. But having said that, if you look at our distribution per unit, which is usually what uh, REITs measure themselves against, uh, now, there has been an increase over the last uh, half year or year on year basis. We have seen a 5% increase. So revenue is just a top line figure. You should actually look at what the bottom line is and what we're delivering. And we've delivered an increase in the distribution per unit or DPU for short. Right. One of the things you're currently doing is redeveloping the Market Street car park. The car park's been leveled. Uh, how soon before we see Capital Green come up in that place? Uh, we expect the completion to be end of 2014. Now, in that year, uh, there is no other grade A office building completing. So we should be able to capture the entire year's demand. And do you think you'll be able to make more out of an office building than you could out of a car park? Oh, it's absolutely. a very popular car park, you know. <laughs> absolutely. Now, just imagine the, uh, as a car park, it was valued at $56 million dollars. 
And uh, as an office building, uh, we expect it to be valued uh, at at least $1.4 billion. So imagine the amount of income that we can get from a $1.4 billion property. Uh, a car park is uh, attractive, but we still have another car park within our portfolio, and that's the Golden Shoe Car Park. Uh, we have about 1,000 lots there. In fact, uh, the waiting list is you know, about 300 people. Right, all trying to get a season uh, car park. Season, spot. And, and we have hourly parking as well. Mm. So we do have a good mix. Uh, we have very good quality offices. We have car park space. And we also have uh, some retail at Raffles City. Uh, in which we own 60%. Uh, we also have a hotel income from uh, Raffles City, uh, which has two uh, very prime uh, hotels, the Fairmont and the Swiss Hotel. And uh, in all, uh, our CCT's uh, portfolio consists of uh, uh, both hotel income, uh, office income, which is primary, and then some retail income. Final question then. Uh, and a question that uh, retail investors might ask themselves about most real estate investment trusts, and that is, why do so many of them trade below net asset value? If you've got something that's made of bricks and mortar, uh, or concrete and steel these days, then why is it that they frequently trade at a discount to what they are actually worth? For example, the net asset value of a Capita Commercial Trust is more than $1.60. Mm -hmm. Well, it largely depends on the office cycle, I think. Uh, currently, because the office market is uh, still uh, a little weak in view of the economic environment, therefore, our, the uh, asset value is still higher than our uh, price. But that presents the opportunity. Now, if you look at our net asset value on the uh, look at it on a price per square foot basis, and if you just examine the office portfolio, because we do have car park income, and I take that out, mm -hmm. just office alone, is it works out to about $1,937 per square foot. Well, now, what do we do with that number? Is that now, a good number? Now, if you think of it as uh, a portfolio of uh, very prime grade A office buildings, $1,900 per square foot is actually a low figure. And you compare with what transactions have been, uh, recently in the market, it's been in two th the $2,600 per square foot range. So that presents the opportunity for an increase uh, when the market recovers. And that also shows that we are not excessive in our valuation. So if, uh, if, any other, if uh, another crisis were to happen, which hopefully will not, then you know that there's a very little downside risk. But what you can look forward to is the upside when the market recovers. Thank you so much for coming in and talking to us. It's about a pleasure. Thank you for having me, Mark. Thank you again from Capital Commercial Trust, the Chief Executive, Lynette Leong. Here are further details of Singapore Investment Week. The uh, URL for the website is appearing on your screen now, 25th to the 31st of August. And we leave you with pictures of Capital Commercial Trust. I'm Mark Laudy. Thanks for watching.